Seattle. But we have a reason to be inside the game. That's harsh. Seattle's a nice place. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I visited here without having to be here for the international. So yes, it's very nice. Uh, into the game we go. So uh, DK, they're the ones playing from behind the eight ball. They are down by one game. They must win this to force it into a far decider. They lose it. They're out the t international four and taking home oh, a measly eight hundred thousand dollars. A little bit over eight hundred thousand, yeah, yeah. something like that. It's that's not what they signed up for. They signed up for the the prize, the the big number one finish. Not even the money, just the pride, the prestige of winning TI four. We'll see if they're going to get it. As predicted, the lane seems to be a mid-death profit. Or actually, hold on. Super is on the bottom lane right now. Yeah. They're, it, it looks like they want to try and run what looks to be... A it's, mid-clockwork. It's, it's, it's going to be a dual off lane with both the Shadow Shaman, who's hovering around. Body. He's got boots first, so he's going to try and make some space here for Super and then just babysit him there. Fenrir is going to be switching himself between the top as well as the mid. And in fact, we got ROTK and Sylar both still deciding where they're headed off here. Considering you've... Yeah, okay. Yeah, ROTK is going to head top lane. Sylar's going to be in that middle lane. And Fenrir, he can grab one creep and then just find himself a different lane. But that means we've got what? Ice, 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 off lane void going up against an ROTK movement. You got MMY and Lanham the doing what they, our, our panel was asking them to do, and that's like rotate themselves around the potential aggro tri lane. Mm, Mushi then in the middle lane is the Queen of Pain, and that leaves Burning as the uh, as the safe lane Razor, but he has an exposed safe lane Razor. Yeah, it's going to be a very tough lane for the Razor to be in, because he's dealing with two heroes that could harass very well, that could punish very well by pushing the lane or making tower dives. Meanwhile, back in the mid lane, it's the Lich and Morphling as expected. Queen of Pain is going to have a tough time, so, so the two supports, two supports need to get a successful gank, ideally on the Lich. But Fenrir knows this. All he needs to do is stay back and don't die. Well, Lanham as well as MMY are prepping themselves. And where are they? Okay, they're switching up. Like, they're behind the tier 1 tower. If they're going to go for this kill, oh, they would have said in the dire that. side of, of the creep wave. Maybe they're waiting for the Lich just to be a little bit too far out and then they can go for him. Because there's no point going in the Morphling. Once he waveforms, the positional change is too much for DK to follow. Yeah, they're, they're actually clicking on Silar, making sure that if he has selected Morph and he has used Morph, if that was the case, th that means no waveform. You could walk in with the slow of uh, the Shadow Strike and just go for a kill. But Silar smartly not picking any spells just yet. Making sure that he does have the access of waveform if necessary. Man, Burning Dash should be really careful on this bottom lane. Like once the levels come up in Crypt Swarm with Ether Shock as well, that's a lot of range just nuke damage yeah. that can come the way of a, of a 644 life point hero. It's not really a hell of a lot to play around with. So he's just gonna be a little bit more cautious about things and uh well, at least the pulls come out here from DK. It's a semi pull you know, he only managed to grab one of the heroes. That's not the greatest thing in the world, but it is going to bring the creep wave down just a little bit closer. And Super and FY, it's almost like Super with that Crypt Swarm, he's forcefully pushing the lane into the tier one tower, so it bounces back again. I'm just looking very closely on this mid matchup here. Mushi is essentially 1v2 in this particular lane, but he's outlasting. This is one of Mushi's best heroes last year, Representing Orange, he did a ton of work making deep runs into the tournament. Let's see how well he's going to fly. Lanham's coming down right now, but the shock drops in the half. Oh. The frost blast hits on two super crypt swarm. The more damage here to Lanham. FY is right behind the attack up the hill. It misses from Fenrir, but it won't miss from the Death Prophet. He'll take the kill, and FY going in deep here on MMY. He's got, he's got, got an advantage. He's got enough for Shackle as well in a moment, and then with the shock, I don't know if it will be a full enough with Lanham also arriving, but 170 life points, and he holds on to the Ether Shock. Just a little bit extra harass. I mean, as expected, Vici's gonna have a superior laning phase. Getting the first blood is a nice bonus. Mid needs to dominate for Mushi, and so far he's doing it at least on the CS war, but that's not really how Queen of Pain works. She really needs to dominate on the CS and also by getting kills. So we'll have to kind of wait and see what a Mushi will deliver on that front. I'm also trying to keep my eyes over an ROTK as well as Ice Ice Ice. 11 for 3 up against a 10 for 1. The battle for farm is immense. And ROTK is holding on to this last point of mana. He's basically got one set of cogs left or one rocket left. He can't find enough space to basically use this clarity of his. So he's a, he can only rely on one of these things until he gets his arm and man, you won't see any kind of control. While Mushi, middle lane, wait for from Sila. Oh, Comes nice a little too late. Mushi was able to blink. He had time then. He could have wait for before that point. With that said, though, Mushi is burning a ton of regens, and having a dual mid lane is nice in the sense that Finra, for example, he could actually go check for the breed and deny Super. the breed. Oh, Lanham. I thought he was going to cut through the tree line and move up and grab him. Because Burning was right behind him with the Static Link. I know it was only level 1, but with the two-point Plaster Field and the ultimate, uh, uh, the buff up with the Chilling Touch, they should have had enough damage to get through the, 
Yeah, the Death problem Prophet. is that Super moves so very quickly. Uh, he didn't have face boot before that gank, but just with a single boots and a point to Witchcraft, he will outmove that Rubik that doesn't even have boots. And now with the face boots available, Super could in theory stay in the lane by himself and out harass the two supports. So Vici Gaming is uh, really free to do what they want with the two supports. In fact, they're coming onto the mid lane. No, they're not. Just, just harassing. Yeah. It's, it's just rotations coming out. Fenrir can move himself around. Super, he came out for the rune, and that's why you also saw Fenrir move himself a little further north there. They're waiting for one rune, and the better rune to give it over to is going to be FY. So uh, with that invis, he can make something happen across the map. <laughs> this top lane is still battling it out. ROTK versus Ice Ice Ice. We have Hook shot up shortly for ROTK. We have Chrono shortly oh, up the Mushi. face of Void. And, uh, Mushi, he's going to get shackled. Yeah, they, oh, he got body blocked. He got body blocked. They had to know he was there. Now the waveform will come. Frost Blast and the Crypt Swarm. Wow, so much range damage they can dish out. That's a very uncharacter mistake of Mushi because he had Observer War in the bottom lane. That's just a scene of... Uh, you know, the invisibility wound getting picked up? Yep. That's a huge mistake to give up. Queen of Pain is a snowball hero. What that means, oh, hold that thought, ice, ice, ice. Ah, uh, he's okay. Yeah. While he's still got Chrono, he's going to have so much confidence to be so far up on the top lane that he really won't care about rotations from VG. It's horrible to give kills as the Queen of Pain because you want the enemy support to be as low level as possible when you make those initial ganks. And now that she's died, she has essentially delayed her level six. She has yep. gave away more experience. I'm not sure how Mushi and, and DK, by extension, is going to recover in this Mushi, game. he's in trouble. Shackles oh, no. again. Waveform again with the Frost Blast. Got more than enough damage to kill him off. This is just a crippling Queen of Pain right now. And Sila pushing through the levels. Mushi's only just cracked level 5. When you think about it, Mushi was still solo up against the dual lane. And the sacrifice was already taking away half of that. And then you've got Sila just pushing him out, getting a couple of kills, keeping him off the lane. And you have basically what was a dual lane hero at a higher level than your solo hero. This is a major problem for DK. Their Queen of Pain is not coming in to be any kind of powerhouse. So level 5, you got 113 as the build. You still need to wait till level 7 before she's going to have enough damage where she can legitimately kill somebody off. Even Shadow Shaman as well as Lich should be able to survive through that. Yeah, and generally when you're ganking as a Queen of Pain, it's really helpful when your other allies has high burst nukes. I mean, oh, Super is gonna die. There goes your Chrono. There goes support coming out from Lionel. Oh. RTK, he hookshot it in, but he got blocked in by the Chrono of Ice Ice Ice. And now Super locked out. Maybe Mushi, they're just sting, and Queen of Pain will take a much needed kill coming her way. DK finally on the board six minutes in. If oh. RTK connected that hook, Super lives, and maybe Rubik dies actually, but. Oh, he, he connected the hook. It just, yeah, it just, he, he just stopped. Connected, he connected on Rubik and just got caught in the side of the Chrono. I guess Mini Summer's yeah. still there. Mucci's taking a lot of damage again from Sila. For all the kills he gets in the middle lane, he still has to burn through all of his bottle charges, and uh, Sila doesn't have to expend anything apart from what? One waveform, 160 mana, not that difficult. Yeah, sometimes as a mid, you just get ganked a lot and you get you get killed, and that's just part of the game. The problem with me with Mushi dying is that it's too easy. Yeah. Shadow Shaman just walked up to him and shackled. Like, you gotta at least make him work for it, because if they're not working for it, that means the other lanes for Vici are going extremely well as well. The only saving grace that DK has going for them is the fact that Burning is the lead farmer in this game. But Razor's not one of those heroes that's a hyper carry in the sense that he could entirely take over a game by himself. So I'm still extremely worried for DK given the start that the, the entire team had. The funny thing is though, like you look through all, all your grumps, okay, we're seven minutes in, but it's zero on the experience and it's only like 350 on the gold. There's, there's not that much difference between these two teams. You'd think with the 3-1, it really feels watching the game that it's a very commanding performance coming out from Fiji Gaming. Like, they're the ones who are in control. Like, Sile is getting big. Like, Lynch control of the middle lane. Like, Queen of Pain doesn't really seem to have much hope for anything. But MMY as well as Lanham are working their butts off right now. Yeah. They've got themselves stacks. They're power leveling up Mushi. And he's not going to... Well, then again, okay. I thought for a moment he'd use Sonic Wave to farm up the uh, just the stack because he can't finish it with his scream. One more, actually, he probably can with one last screen, but now the replicate of Morphling, if he jumps in on this one with waveforms, he'll take oh, that's two of these, and there it is, and he's going to take out, oh, actually, he missed the last one, the rocket came in from Clockwork. Well, yeah. he's still got the experience. I mean, they share yeah. the experience, but Stylar being able to steal away a ton of gold away from DK, that's huge. 
it's true that you know the, the experience go gra the experience graph is fairly even, but I think that's actually quite deceptive. If you open the level graph for both teams, I'd much rather be Vici's position having much higher level supports, yeah. especially Shadow Shaman hitting six. By contrast, look at the Rubik, look at the Ancient Apparition, they're at three and four respectively. Oh, oh, oh. Top lane, he got ice, ice, ice. He has to leave himself away. There's not enough man for Chrono. He's killed by one point. Now he's got enough. He's got to get past the cops to push back. Ice, ice, ice. He's too much damage, but burning with that static link over an RNTK. The Iron Storm, though, has been soaked up by the Greek wave. He needs his fire to put off cooldown, but he's still short by 20 mana. He's got his one charge, and RNTK bottles up and escapes away. That was extra 112 damage as well, which Burning was able to soak out from him. And Mushi is coming up for the kill. He can actually blink, scream, not enough mana for Sonic Blade. He has a bottle, and there she goes! Radiant's Through the tree line for Mushi. Was able to pick up the clockwork. Structures able to work with the tank on the half empty. Huge kill. Much better that he got the kill solo there than sharing it with his teammate. He needs every drop of Dyer's experience that he can get. Is under attack. He's also going to need a little bit more Chrono. Middle lane found FY and Dyer's Dyer's Dyer's. 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 He time walks himself into this one. FY trying to get a little bit of extra support, but FY will go down. And now they can actually get a little bit more pressure towards this tier 1 tower. DK are working their way back Radiant's into this game slowly. Is under the advantage is coming back. Dyer's and with these kills, so are the levels. MMY is now on top. He's 201 points Radiant's away of experience from his level fallen. 6. And when we start adding Ice Blast into the mix, Things are going to change across the map. I uh, think that's huge. Given the fact that you could use Ice Blast and Chronosphere as a one-two punch, as a ganking tool, you get kills free. It is so easy to actually get those kills. And of course, we've been seeing Mushi picking up three kills now for his team. Looks like tower. Tier 1's going to be under a little bit of trouble, but DK, they're not giving up without a fight. They could fight right now very easily. Mushi is... He's got a hook shot. He's looking for the hit on Mushi. He's actually baited it twice. But didn't finish the job. Popped his in Vizrune instead. They need to creep to keep the fruit wave pushed out. There's not enough experience in FY just yet. Meanwhile, more fling, waveforming away. Mushi's playing around with him. But remember, he doesn't have ultimate, and now with the replicate on the field, Mushi's gonna fling himself away. Hook shot as he goes onto the replicate, not Mushi himself. So he was capable of blinking himself down and away. And then bottle charges back up again. But in the meantime, the mass serpent wards are down after the crop ulti has worn off, and the tier one tower belongs to Vici. Radiance middle tower has fallen. This is what Vici will be able to do continuously every time those cooldown. We've seen this combo so much: Shadow Shaman as well as Death Prophet. They could take Roshan easily. They could take the towers easily. We still haven't seen DK having an answer for that in the draft at the very least. So that's something that our analysts ask. Dyer's top tower and It seems like DK has attack. yet to deliver an answer for it. Just an insanely small thing, but I just want to give props to FY for using his Mass Serpent Wards to deny his own Mass Serpent Wards. <laughs> oh, that's huge, man. D DK came up to try and farm a couple of them, and he, uh, like, one of them got taken, and one of them he actually denied himself. So, small thing, but little thing. 9, that's 20 gold. That's a 40 gold swing. Huge. That's, that's a lot. Drastic. Changes. Right. Burning's still working in towards that mech of his. Still a long way off, and we actually got a hand of Midas coming out to Ice Ice Ice. So, our offlane Faceless Void, not going for Mask of Madness, not going for Treads, is actually going in for a Midas build. Dyer's I actually like this quite a bit. He's essentially attack. a walking Chronosphere. Whenever he has it up, he's going to go with it for a gank. It doesn't matter if he doesn't do any damage right now, because he's not expected oh, to. Smoke from VG. They don't realize, though, that DK is also smoked up. Lanham Smoke is going to break on FY. And FY is, of course, vice versa. The rocket we go on, and oh. he hook shots both of them! He doesn't know what he actually mana. picked up until that point, but you're right, Chrono now goes off. Hey, only one fly to RTK, Ice Ice Ice, get out of there! Not in there, though! The Lich only follows him! Burning is bouncing up and away to the green wave, it won't come back down to him. Pops up the eye of the storm, waveform from Morphling, killing a face of both in the tree line. Burning goes down as well, and DK, it became a disaster after it looked like a dream. That came for us. It slowed three or four heroes. They only have lost two, but those are the key two, right? You get the Midas to get the levels on Faces Void. And here comes yet another tower push, because coincidentally, Radiant's all of those ultimates are attack. right back up. Yep. I think they Dyer's might go for two. FY is not dropping attack. his ult. He should hold him. The Super's ultimate is, is still only a level one exorcism from Death Prophet. Oh, Courier in middle lane. Mushi, he's got blink of cooldown. But he's going to get into the tree line if he wants to take the Courier, which he will not do. And the top Dyer's tower is gone. Tower not to mention Clockwork. If he blinked at the tree light, he was dead. Now there's no hook shot there, but. I wonder what. Keep tracks. What Vici Gaming is saving this particular Mass Urban Ward usage for? Maybe are they thinking about Rosh? the Roshan? Yeah. I mean, Chronosphere just got spent not too long ago. If they want to go in there, they can actually break it down quite quickly. Yeah, there's no reason why they couldn't tank it up. 
Then again, Lich, he's also not at the point of Frost Armor just yet. Two points sacrifice, uh, four points to Frost Blast. But there's, there's a lot of survivability still coming out. Yeah, they're going yeah, yeah, Lich. They're yeah. going for it. Oh. Well, VG Gaming, they get to make sure that bottom lane's pushed out before they fully go for that, because Mushi was adding a little bit of momentum towards it. But FY, yeah, he's holding the mass up more for exactly that. And really, what does DK have to scout out for him? There's only one ability on the map which can let them do it safely, and that's Ancient Apparition. It's Ice Blast. A large part of it is deterrence by fear. Like, if you just are afraid of the Chrono Ice Blast combo, you won't want to go for engagement like that, but you won't be afraid of it if the Chrono's down. And I think that's exactly why VG Gaming is choosing to take the... Take the engagement right now. And uh, Chrono is now technically up, but perhaps a little bit too late at this point. Yeah, it is. Roshan's basically down, but then again, they're on their way. Smoked up DK, but Roshan, Roshan now he's gone. Wampling is the Aegis, the Immortal. FY is TPing out in Syla. Well, yeah, she makes a replica of the disappearing Shadow Shaman. But the question is now for, for DK do they try and force this, knowing the Mass Serpent Wards will probably be down? Knowing that the Crop Ulti is still only level one, do they just try and get a pick off? Because if they can get that, if they can get that uh, Chronosphere out in Scylla with the AA Ulti before and hold him there before he's able to replicate away. I mean, if you want to, if you want to spend all those spells to kill an Aegis, I think VG Gaming is fine with that because now with the Blink Dagger as well as Clockwork, they will chase you down after your spells are spent. So perhaps not the best plan to go for the Scylla with Aegis. In fact, it's going to be Vichy Gaming that might be threatening mid-tower fight now. Or not. They're going to go back and farm more. Yeah. Give us some time, man. Give us some time. Vichy Gaming are one win away from facing up against EG. They, they're not going to risk anything. They, and they don't need to. But even with the combos Dyer's which DK have got, with the Faceless Void, obviously it's going to be a massive problem, but you're still going to back yourself for a good mid-game timing push. So you just wait it out, then you just force it out. You've lost no towers again. VG Gaming still have only lost, I believe, one T1 tower in this entire series. And it may remain that way, because DK, they've got to win a fight before they can push. Because they don't have a tower destroyer until the Razor gets attacked. Oh, the middle lane, there it is, nice, nice, nice. There's my also two boys, and the Mad Serpent Wars. Okay, that was committed. Uh, hook shot in from RSDK. Picks up the Ancient Apparition as well. And Muchi is in quite close here. I don't know why those Mass oh, Serpent were down. Your Scepter up in the air. Tower. The silence is there from Super as well. They just tried to chip away at the Tier 2 tower, but the backdoor regeneration's kicked in. And this is why Super can't just take out this tower now. The Mushi back towards the front lines, and more FY. Perfect blink, Frost Blast, Crypt Swarm, jumps himself away. The Lich only had thought Fenrir might have committed it just then. But he held off, the fortification is gone. And so is that on that exorcism. And they'll have to back themselves out. As Lana was able to steal the ball things like a chrono here. Uh, ice 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 could reach Scylla, but the mass serpent wars are still there for FY. They're timing out now. Yep. But at the same time, DK would have seen that and that would have been enough to help him back up. Or make a decision to back up. DK is really in trouble. Their items is not really keeping up at the rate that Vichy Gaming's getting the item. Mushi, if you look over him, looks like he's gonna go for a black king bar, which in theory, keeps them alive, but not against a Blink Hex or a Blink Shackle. DK, they're just looking for a fight, and they, they get back off the farm, but Vichy Gaming are never really giving them the fight. They're Super positioning themselves so well. Super, gonna pick him up, drag him back. There's your Chrono, holding him down with the AO, they will kill on Super at the same time. All they managed to do is kill off Super. You've still got ROTK to hook him shot, shot up. Cold burning inside the cult. They're gonna kill him off. Nice Quab Sonic Wave. ROTK will go down right now. And they got the buyback coming out from Super. Ice 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 jumps himself up with the waveform from Lana. Goes back down, gonna kill off Lich. They're moving back over to Mushi. Waveform off cooldown now for Scylla. But who's he go on? FY is trying to battle this one, but DK, they've got more reinforcements. And Super couldn't get back to the fight fast Huge enough. Fight. Four for nothing for DK. And that's exactly what I mean. You gotta find a fight, you gotta Chrono, you gotta Ice Blast, get a quick pick off, and then decide either you wanna retreat or move on. And the fact that they kill one of the most mobile, annoying cores out there, that's huge. Super, I mean, he could have disengaged with Yules. In fact, he's... Well, Exorcism. <laughs> that is not a real ancient apparition. He's not a replica, but he took so much damage, they thought it was real. I mean, you just don't expect the enemy Rubik to steal Replicate and then makes, makes one of the ally, right? They thought that was a real one. It's, it's yeah. a f that's, that's one of those things where Scylla probably, probably should be the one calling that one out. Now they come down with the, with the tail attack. end of the Exorcism. It's only got another two, three seconds. But it's a little bit of chip damage onto the tier two tower. Burning back towards the front lines. 
Fast Serpent Ward. Wow, Camille is high. BG Gaming, they really want this tier 2 tower. What was stolen this time? He actually finally he gets what he was searching for, which is the rep uh, the wall. And that's going to give you strength, Sila. Where's that Chrono? He's still on cooldown. 26 seconds. FY with his Blink Dagger still waiting as well to hex up. Mushi closes one. Can't reach him for the Shackles. The tower, it will go down. Hook shot in from RTK. And then the Waveform to follow up. The Shackles still over from Mushi. Can we go push back? And they're all jumping inside the Colts. Bouncing it back out again. Somehow you've still caught. Well, RTK finally does go down. But I Sai Sai is going to join him. The Aegis Immortal brings Sila up alive. They bring down the mid tower and want what was lost. Off lane for off lane. That was, that was a trade, and Aegis, of course. Yeah, and your offlane has a Midas, so I think that was a great trade overall. And even though DK lost the tower, they didn't give up free, they fought for it. It's offlane for offlane and Aegis, like you said. And I think that's a win for DK. They now have bought themselves more time. Anytime that you can force out those two ultimates and trade evenly, you got to be happy if you're DK. So now they bought themselves more time. Burning's starting to become more and more of an issue. They, they are starting to have some difficulty in terms of killing them. Now with that said, Sylar hasn't gotten his uh, shotgun yet, which he should be Dyer's fairly close to. He's been farming quite well. Just Lincoln Sphere instead. Okay, never mind. It seems like he's not farming well at all. At least not at the rate that that he did in, in that game against Cloud9, where he was just farming he's, out of control. He still got himself a 19-minute Lincoln Sphere. We, we can't hit him up for that one. With an 8.5k net worth, the highest on the map. He's looking good. Blink down. They found Queen of Pain. And now yeah. FY, Aegis with the Shackles. Just running himself out. Hook shot now, making sure he stays exactly wow. where they held him. Exorcism being committed. I mean, I'm not sure about that. Dyer's because there's no tower, tower he can yeah. push you yeah. either. There's, there's no secondary advantage. It's like you, VG game were expecting DK to jump in with Chrono and everything they had. So that's a 100 second bot essentially for, for DK. Mm. At the same time, you've still got, like, in 50 seconds, you've got your hookshot back. You've still got FY's Mass Serpent Wards. And it looks like a rotation of the top lane. They could just look to the tier 2 tower. By the time they reach that, sure, they won't have Exorcism up, but. It doesn't really matter. Vici game is pushing power is still quite high. Yeah. One thing, one thing to be starting concerning Vici is that as they're pushing these tier twos and, and especially high ground, a single chrono that finds three or four and a good ice blast will just end the push. So Vici gaming, especially with the morphling as a core, eating those ice blasts and you know eating a sonic wave after that is absolutely huge. In fact, I think again DK is looking for that type of fight. They're looking for a fight where a Chrono gets one or two Ice Blast and just go for a quick rip. VG Gaming are playing bait games. They fell for it before and now they're trying to make DK fall for it. It's like the replica clockwork out on the side. Hoping that someone from DK would like waft the Chrono or something along these lines. RTK hookshot back off cooldown. How long until Crop Ulti? 35 seconds. Lichalti is also still up, and FY is waiting for a jump in. But the Observer War is watching him very, very closely. So the second he goes in, it's going, to be, it's going to be instantly spotted out by DK. And Sala's also going to be a little bit careful with that waveform. He's trying to clean up the creep wave before DK is ready to fight. And they've committed to this one. Like, Ice 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 actually getting pinged up. He's pinging himself saying, Yo, guys, like, you're backing up, but you've left me here alone in the tree line. That's kind of where he wants to be anyways. He's fine. But he doesn't want to get scouted. It's, it's a place where RTK is never going to rocket to scout for him either. This is a two-man chrono right here. Um... The problem is the two heroes are separated too far. You couldn't get the Ancient Apparition Blast at this range to hit both of them. I think Silar is kind Dyer's of the, the most important one. If you, if you get a clock as a bonus, great. Uh, he's pinging him out. It's like, I see two, man. Yep. Things, uh, things are a little tense on the top lane while no one's wanting Dyer's to engage. I'm actually expecting FY attack. to hex him out. Oh, Where FY? is it? Where is it? He's moving up. Oh my god! He's in the wrong corner. He's so close. He could snip him from this range. And he's okay. so close to Ice Ice okay. Ice. Walk around the this tree corner. Dyer's that way. There's pass the victory right there. I mean, essentially, this guy could do the same, right? Come around, hit him. Yes, he could! I side side, if he leaves that, or he's also gonna slow oh, it out. Oh, right there! Run him, run him! He got the hex! The mass server was! The shackles as well, but he's coming in the blast! FY will die right now, but I side side will join him! The Lich only bouncing around, burning! Locked in by ROTK! Silo waveformed himself back up again. Two calls down for DK. Lanham waveforming himself out. And maybe MMY if there's nothing to get some. Oh, there is! The Yule Scepter from Super picks him up, throws him down, and the ultimate of Exorcist and we'll bring him in. Three for the price of one. And most of it was set up by FY discovering Ice 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 in the trees. Not only was it set up by FY, it, it was the, his entire team committing to bursting that uh, Void down. If they didn't burst him down and if he was able to get off his Chronosphere, could have been a massively different fight. But not only did they get three kill, Vici Gaming protected their own tier one tower, added a ton of gold to their heroes and items.
this is uh, quite the quite the swing. I thought DK was starting to stabilize after taking some good fights and a couple of towers and a, a nice defense, but. VG Gaming's right back in it. Yeah, and VG Gaming wasted so much time and DK as well on that top lane that Roshan is alive again. So, Mass Urban Wards might be down, same for Exorcism, but they still have enough damage they could get through it. I still love to, we're going to be looking at what is a 25, 26 minute mech coming out from Fenrir. Taking himself a, a rather long time to get to that point. But at the same time, Bloodstone's also approaching here for Super. And that's going to be Dyer's a huge amount of regeneration here for a Death Prophet. That means never-ending spam of Crypt Swarm. That's what that means. Dewarding Fenrir, Wayform from Lana, Blaze by Zion, commits the Chrono to kill off the Lich as well. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a game plan. You're a walking Chrono, so spend it. You know, use it for that one kill if you have to. See, I could understand that if you had, like, an Agony Scepter, but this is still a minute and a half. The Chrono's on the sidelines, and Chrono Charm's available for VG. They won't have that for the fight. A walking Chrono or not, when you got a support hero like that, you know he's not going to escape. You could save those kind of things. FY might die here in middle lane. Mushi, he triggers the D rune. And, uh, well, okay. FY doesn't want a bar of it. The rocket actually comes in and scouts out Mushi in the trees. We've got pushing coming on bur from burning on the bottom lane now. Tier 1 tower will be the primary focus. And Mushi, in fact, he just tries to make the most attack. out of this DD rune. And the TP support's coming in. That's going to be the clockwork. And ROTK. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Radiant's top no. tower is under attack. Uh, you definitely should go for those uh, scare tactics. If Queen of Flame blinks away, then you go for this 9. 100% save, right? Yeah. It was just the hook shot which he was faking, Radiant's which I was not attack. really happy about. Um, there's a sentry ward just coming down here from VG Gaming. They're going to be really annoyed once they look at the replay of this one just to see how close it is. This is where Watch, the vision They're going to smoke is. right here. I bet, I bet after they cleared up this crew wave, they're going to smoke. And then DK's gonna see it. Oh, up they come. Sila hiding, hiding on the high ground. And they're gonna actually use the Death Prophet fake one. Coming down, attacking. Lana trying to move deep warning for the moment. And now the Exorcism comes off. Yule steps during the Razor up and towards the end. Oh. And then Hookshot from RTK. He's trying to actually force him out. Lana and RTK being picked up and tossed out of his Chrono. Oh, no. And now the Chrono. Big the job as well. High side, side squares the bounce burn. He pushed in. The Sila. Yes, she uses the damage. Trying to push him in. Lana from Cold inside the Mass Urban Wars. It's 3 for 2 right now. Mabushi with a scream. And a pick up FY as well. Excuse me. Four for three. Oh, FY's denying his wards? Yep, yep. Yep. How many? How okay, many, man? Okay, How many? Battle of battle. Okay. Battle of, battle of, battle of, oh. okay, he can't deny his own himself. That's just impressive. <laughs> I mean, it's technically not very difficult to do, but I've never really seen pro players actually do it. And it makes sense to do it, man. That's it's a lot of gold you're giving away for free. But the big thing is that DK won an amazing fight. And yeah, it was Chronosphere that was spent to kill a Lich, but the two team postured around such that, you know, the, vote, the ult came right back on. and. I think Faceless Void is getting to a point where it's actually not really possible for Vichy to go Radiant's and focus him and then kill him before attack. that Chrono comes up. Now, once the Shotgun comes online, that's a different story. Yeah. But Void is starting to get fairly tanky and he's getting fairly scary. Scarier he gets the worse is for VG. I actually just checked out the graphs as well, and I know there's a certain pro player here which would describe this as a drastic change in the experience graph. It's gone up by about 3,000 experience. We're cracking about 5,000 gold advantage. Still left for VG Gaming, but when they had an 8,000 advantage to start with, that's one of those fights that just keeps DK alive in this engagement. And when you have a Razor, who was he? Is, is he actually going to go for BKB here? Like, just, should Burning even go for BKB? Or does he need the Agadim's upgrade? Because right now, I'm still not seeing a pushing power coming out from DK. I think in normal cases where you just want more damage, Aghanims is definitely the go-to case. But you definitely have, you have a Queen of Pain helping you out in the damage department. So I see the value of simply staying alive. And Razor's one of those heroes that as you stay alive, you deal more damage by having Eye of Storm. So you know what? I, I think it's fine. I think he, his team and himself isn't desperate for damage, so you, you could afford to go for the BKB. Smart movement from DK. They really want this to work for him. And Siler is the only one they could catch out, but he's got a Replicate. So the second they see him, he waveforms, Replicate's out, and they're like, ah, damn it. There's that E-Blade. That's mm -hmm. the damage they, they, that Vichy Gaming was searching for. They, they need that Morphling dead straight away. Uh, but then again, at the same time, they also need the Death Prophet dead straight away. Who, also, do, you, who do you focus? Why not both? Just Chrono Ice Blast. Easy, right? <laughs> you make it sound so. Ideally, if you could focus Super be before 
she gets uh, her exorcism off. I think that's the, the one. But it's so hard. Mo most of the fights, super, you know, he used it for a solo kill, right? So he definitely will use it for fights. This is going to be really frustrating if they have to smoke. Oh, they oh, do. That's, that's what I'm saying. I told they you. smoke right on top of the observer block. I told you. They're going to smoke right here thinking it was safe. It's like, oh, we got a D-Ward. Yeah. And now VG Gaming, where do they go? DK, they're going to be prepared for this. And actually, look at them. They move up and they're going to draw the battle line right here. It's like, Bernie, this is the you, moment. You take the... You take the... You face that get. That, you know, Bernie. Face get. Very face that get. Very And now Bernie, he's almost dead. The shotgun hit him, but it was enough to get the kill. Jumped out by FY. He controlled eyes, eyes, eyes. The Chrono's still not there yet. Now he jumps in. Chrono hits on three. Iron Decay, big Sonic Wave from Bucci. Ben Ruiz going to go down. Super, the Elvis still doing some huge work. He's going to drop a triple kill. Bucci in the tree line. Silent back on top of the replicant. The silence will be there. Bucci can't get anywhere from here. The range is still alive, but burning is a long way away. And Roshan is right there. They're going to get the Asians after that fight. Oh, this is huge. And what's really Burning going to do? He won't back to be part of this. If he goes in there and tries to snipe it and loses his life, well, he's coming in close. Ain't never to find back to give it at least one blast. Didn't just let it off from, from the base. That's still on cooldown. You have to respect the ice blast, though. The fact right. that you've got to respect back. the fact you should not be caught out. You'll step them with the silence as well. Ice the blast! Ice there. blast! It's coming in for burning. He doesn't oh. have the damage to do anything with it. And Super and Sano, she moved up high enough. They didn't even get hit by That's it. That's a dieback. He's out of it for 80, 60 seconds. This Radiant's is huge. Top this is a big, attack. big moment right now for BG Gaming. They jump in, they break the hex, and then they go through when Roshan shackling him up, and they will kill him off here. That's an AGC model, that's a bonus experience, and the Graves will go back the way of VG Gaming after that engagement. So now no longer no, can kill has both. Fallen to the dark. We kill ideally Death Prophet. Who did he actually chrono in that fight? It looked so good for DK at the beginning of the fight. I think it was a Lich, perhaps? And yep. maybe a Clockwork that yeah, was caught in? He got Lich and Clockwork, that was basically it, dude. Ancient Apparition, dead. On the bottom lane, Hex stuff, four stuffing away, and Fly will kill him off for copying the Ice Blast. But you've got an ultimate off cooldown exorcism in 10 seconds time. That's a full ultimate middle lane, Asyla. He doesn't have enough to finish Mushi. And he'll back himself Radiant's away, in fact he goes to his replicas in the bottom lane. They have Mass Stone Blood, and they have Exorcism. They also have 15 Bloodstone charges over on Super. Yeah, th this could be Rash right here. After that Roche team fight, it was five kills, a buyback, another kill on AA, another tier two tower. Radiant's They're gonna commit. They're gonna fallen. commit. Could be Rax. They still have Mass Serpent Wards and half of the Exorcism duration left. And now FY, Mass Serpent Wards down. They mop up the Creep Wave. And with no fortification devices, they used to try and delay them on the tier two tower. DK are under siege. That tower of oh, the plane again to burning. Down a half of his life points. Already forced to use a very premature mech. And it's going to be VG Gaming backing up. They just do the damage to the tier 3 tower. And retreat themselves away. And what do we got coming out on Courier? We got Point Booster in for FY now. So he's starting up to build his Aghanim Scepter for the Shadow Shaman. You got Silator as 4,000 gold after already purchasing up the E Blade. So if he wants to, he can look towards what he's wanting. He can Butterfly. While Faces Boy is still trying to finish up his BKB. Lanimous four staff, but no Blink Dagger. And Mushi, what I think was the start of uh, of the Scythe of the Pines, is currently just an ultimate orb. Yeah. I mean, I know I just said this like five minutes ago, where DK doesn't have damage issues, but with the last round of team fight and then now the items are ending up on Vichy Gaming, they are starting to have damage issues. Yeah. And having BKBs on your Ice 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 Faces Void and Burning Razor, that doesn't really solve the problem. Razor hasn't had a new item for, for what it felt like 10 minutes because he, he's died multiple times, he has to, he has to buy back. So his BKB is going to come very late. The only thing is, he didn't have to buy back during that last fight. He could have waited. Yeah. And if he didn't buy back, I think he... Yeah, no, he, he would have it. He, yeah. would, he would have his BKB by now, and he would be joining Ice 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 with the BKB. Ice Ice 2020. It is. That it is. You can judge it from an armchair. BG Gaming are coming down the middle lane, so they're ready to fight. They still have the Aegis Seaborn over on Morphling, and Dara TK, well, he's right next to Mushi, and now he's very, very close after Battery Assault. Was considering going for the hook shot, but realized the blink away was going to make that next to impossible to hit. And without the Aghanim Scepter and RTK, he's not going to start throwing these around too casually. I know there was an infographic that just popped up about, you know, their place guarantees themselves a million dollars, but don't count DK out just yet. 
You can't. You really, really can't. I mean, they, they're essentially working right now with a Wombo Combo lineup. And those are the lineup that you don't count out because you, in theory, have a picture-perfect Chronosphere, an Ice Blast on top of that, and a Sonic Wave. That will win the team fight. You just need the picture-perfect positioning of yes. Pichu Gaming, which means all five of them basically have to be grouped up to get hit by this. And also Ancient Apparition needs to be far enough back that he can get a good radius on that blast. Which means he can't be close enough to always give the Chilling Touch bonus damage, which you also need to give over to, to Mason Floyd. Look, Tori, right, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's very probable, but it's, it's definitely possible. You're trying, to, you're trying to do what the Monty Python boys say. Look at the bright side of life. Ice, ice, ice! What you doing? It's working on his hind legs. Doing some jumps. <laughs> yep. Do those squats. Now the Master Seven Wars down again. And Lanham Force tapped in really close. He's got it. He stole he it. He got Master Seven Wars. He can actually return the Master Seven Wars. Problem is right now he's silenced. Now it will break off. He needs to throw it in. Ice, ice, ice. Oh! He's got RTK, but more importantly, he got Super in this one. There's your AA Blast Bang! Wave. That's two. They've got two right now. Super, but they need more damage. Mushi blinks up. There she goes. Wait, she's going to be dead. Is that even worth it? Seconds. I don't know if it is, man. Mushi is on the sidelines. And look at, like, there's a buyback that comes out from the clock. Death Ruff is back alive yep. again. There was a second death time because of those bloodstone charges. And now TP's in towards the mid tower. They're coming as quickly as they possibly can. Mushi also, not even waiting, he buys back. And look where these mass serpent wards of Rubik ended up. They're outside the basin north of the south entrance. Vichy's coming in for the kill. Ice 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 is going out for the kill. He walks straight into Super and RTK. Battery Assault slows him down. Super lets the ulti go. AA Blast, Yule Scepter. He's still got hit by it though. Ice 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 walked in here. And where's that Ulman? Glitch only bouncing around on the DK. They're not splitting themselves fast enough. The Ranger is on the sideline. But at the same time, again, they kill up the crop. But with a shotgun damage, Lanham actually pushes him back with the adaptive strike. RTK Battery Assault comes off cooldown. But he's still too far away. And there you go. Warpling waveforms himself up with the adaptive strike. Gets the Kill. And another buyback. Look coming. at Ice 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 up in the mid lane. He's trying, he? he's trying to push the wave. He's creep skipping it. He's well, just creep skipping it as far as he possibly can in a way to safety. All right, he's back out of there. DK holds, sort of. Burning dies one more time, but he at least finished an item before it. And meanwhile, Death Prophet dies once again. What used to be a 15 charge Bloodstone is now down to six. six. Also, Aegis is running out. So I think Vici Gaming just actually got repelled for at least quite a while. Although. I'm Mass Urban Ward. Yeah, they're now, they're now buffed up. Aghanim yeah. Scepter and level 2. VG Gaming, well, they did lose a lot during that. They definitely lost a lot during that. The funny thing is, they didn't even lose, they didn't lose the Aegis. It's being reclaimed right now on top of Silas. Well, they can never even think about focusing on Oh, now! Ice Look at blast. the timing ice for blast. it! It just got claimed back! Oh, Sila! It couldn't be any worse! Now he turns okay. around, e blade stopping Ice 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 from attacking me to beat the enemy. For some reason, he attacked the creeps. Now he gets a time block first hit! Silence will have no effect there, Super. He's immune with BKB. He's dead, though. Now yep, he's in the corner. He needs more time. He needs more. He's trying to juke it. He can't do it. Can't backtrack that much damage. Well worth the trade. Well worth the trade. How is the timing for it? Silence Gubby spitting chips right now. I mean, he you just write it down, man. He lost the Aegis. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was perfectly calculated by DK. Maybe. I, it definitely is, man. You don't make that type of play. If, if it wasn't perfectly calculated, you use the Chrono for Aegis, you lose the game. Yep. Now Super defending the bottom lane, but oh, it's up a top lane. On top. Yeah, Burning and Bushi, they're teaming up together and they're staring down. There's the blink up, but a very quick blink away by FY. The AOLTI was flying up too, that was meant for the lane. A little bit further down, hence off target. FY as well as Fenrir, get back. DK somehow still holding on. This is, it, it wasn't meant to be their game to win, but they, they need to claw and fight their way back. Burning still very, very much so under farm. He has items, what, like, I think Super had this item, I think, last game. It was, what, 15 minutes into the game? Yep. Super didn't go for the mech, but, you know, that's, that's the analogy. Burning, I just don't think he will get many kills at this point. His damage output is just not up there. You're right. So I'm not sure how he's going to find the gold. I'm not sure where he finds it from either. There's nothing on the courier, but I suppose if you're able to get yourself a couple more kills, the gold will come. They really need a big three or four hero kills on the enemy side of the map, such that they could push at least one or two tier two towers. That's the kind of burst goal that you could get, and they're seeking for it again. The Chrono Ice Blast, it doesn't even matter if you're Morphling, you will just get killed. But that said, the Morphling does have a BKB now. 
BKB will not prevent the shatter of the Ice Blast, but it will prevent the, the ticking damage. What a quick respawn time on Roshan. That's only 13 seconds of the three minutes. So he's up, but now he's already alive. BG Gaming. Oh, there's an Invis Rune on RTK. This is the worst spawn that DK could have hoped for. Yep. And they, and they again, like, what are you going to do? Throw an Ancient Apparition Oli to check for it? You don't want it. You need to save this for your Wombo combo. And they're waiting for somebody to come top lane. But it seems like VG Gaming don't care about their Tier 2 tower on top. It has been abandoned. But if Mushi also shows himself, or Ice Asai shows himself, then VG Gaming knows what's up. They've actually set traps on the Tier 2 towers. Silas farming up Aegis stack in the meantime, so there's money coming the way here of VG Gaming. Yeah, as soon and as Burning as is just like, screw this. All right, tower, now. I mean, as soon as Burning shows himself, VG Gaming is going to the pit. They're in the pit. Uh, but look, Queen of Pain Illusion. It got adapted strike from inside the pit. The ping comes straight away. That came out from Mushi. And now VG Gaming, they, they, might, they might have to commit mass serve wars. There's the AG blast coming in. And it's going to slow down VG Gaming. But Roshan, yeah, he's dead. He's dead. And they get up to a tier 2 tower trade for Roshan. But that's Aegon and Cheese into the hands of VG Gaming. That's going to make the next fight much, much more difficult. Is DK going to avoid for six minutes? Can they avoid for six minutes? We've seen Cloud and I do things like that. But they also have heroes that are much more well equipped for that sort of job. I mean, I don't think DK could split push. That uh, DK... I mean, Queen of Pain, in theory, can, right? In Ice 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 tried earlier. Technically, Ancient Apparition can from inside of his base as well, but it's not going to mean it's going to be as effective. Right, there's just like, there's a clockwork on the map, and it's just so hard to split push against a hero like that. Uh, Silo is his full Scotty. 40 minutes into the game. He bought both the Alban Orbs on that top lane when he was in, uh, in combat. And now the whole thing is on him. So you've got a 2,000 uh, life point Morphling who's actually put basically everything he's got from strength into agility. He wants as much damage out from that hit as he possibly can make. Technically and have... still killable. Technically, yes, but they need the blast. Ice 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 jumped Chrono. in. There's your Chrono, Sala. He's going to pop up the BKB, which means there's actually Ice Ice Ice. Here goes your Chrono, finally. And what's he doing? He's just TPing out. It's just a safety. It's a safety Chrono. That's an issue. So yes. what do you do when Vichy storms down top or mid or anywhere? What you do is hit Silo with a Chrono before he gets the BKB. But there, there's no Chrono now. Yeah, true. So Vichy are coming. There's no Chrono. If Vichy can get themselves a kill on the bottom lane as well, like, you've, you've got a double jumping coming from ROTK as well as FY. These guys are literally like Bash and Hex Brothers. All they got to do is just getting close, and the Rocket's giving in the vision. They see defense is not really ready at the moment, and here comes Super. Four seconds until Exorcism, and he is ready to fight. Sila also up towards the front lines. Oh, poor Kony starting off with Buddy. He's close enough to the adapted strike, and the Master Boards go down. Again, though, no, and his Crypt Swarm being swollen, and a hook shot in from RTK. The Cogs goes for the fight out, force up back out again, but Super's ultimate. Just obliterates Ice Ice Ice, ice and Burning is trying to hold up the Sonic Wave, all being picked up by the Meg. The Super back down again, more play. Wave forms in, hitting into Burning so hard. Telegram's pick up only slow him down a little bit, but the bottom rack is already gone down. That is already victory right there for VG Gaming as far as the bottom lane as well as the fight. That's what happened when you miss the Chrono. They yep. cannot miss anymore. They have no more chances. Technically, they have two racks left, but the, the, the tipping point Radiant's is you lose one more racks, the game attack. is just... It's See, essentially I'm, unwinnable. I'm not even sure the Chrono is going to be enough anymore. These BKBs on both Morphling as well as Super, if he gets them off, when you pop the Chrono down, your Ancient Apparition Blast, your Sonic Wave, all your range damage that you want to be pumping up, it, it, nothing will be done. Not against Silar, but the fact, if you could, in theory, oh, she Super also has a BKB. Like, yeah, 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 that's what I'm talking about, man. The double BKBs on the two biggest cores of VG Gaming. This is massively problematic for DK. They basically need not only like the perfect Chrono with heroes in it, but they need the surprise Chrono. They Something that VG Gaming don't see coming. That they all. need to have Vichy to make a mistake, which is not activating those BKBs or clumping very, very hard. Yeah. I mean, Vichy, VG Gaming are not going to give them. They, they are playing so well. I mean, this is the second best of three. They played. Radiant's this is top their tower fourth is under game. Attack. They look fresh, man. They're not making much mis many mistakes. Radiant's man, if, if they're gonna go through fallen. and try and get themselves a grand final, they gotta be fresh. Uh, Mushi. <gasps> oh, he got hook shot in. He was TPing out, and the Cogs push him up on top of the hill. He was inside the Roche pit trying to finish up inside the mines because he couldn't get it with Roche. And now it's on top lane. They go in deeper, but it's a replicate. <laughs> Silent just jumps himself out. No Chrono being expended, however.
So he's still going to be okay from that one, and Mushi should be counting his lucky stars. He's having to blink and run himself back to base, because no he's got no TP scroll. He and VG Mushi. Gaming know this. Super, Exorcism drops cooldown. Let's go high ground. Matt will never fall down, and well jump out. Okay. Woohoo! Ladder! Oh, I know you die. Die. He's, he's gone! Die. He's down! The Crypt won't reach him. Chrono's up in the air. But then again, Super, you're the corrupt. He's almost still doing some serious work. Chrono's on the sidelines, and Super, he does go down, but Zyla on the high ground. Ice, Ice, Ice goes down. Moving to Mushi under the cover of BKB. Get away burning. Where's your wave bomb? There's your rocket from RNTK. That'll bring down Razor. The mid melee rank being pushed down by VG Gaming as well. The ice boss is trying to now. Mushi screams. FY might go down here, but Mushi will lose his own life. FY keeps the shackle on him. FY the cops from RNTK. 100% perfect position. Locked in one, pushed out the other. And the range racks will now go down the mid. And VG Gaming, they don't have a crop build, but they're still going to have insanely fat Morphling that's going to move up and take the top racks as well. Or do they take a kill? It's burning! It's burning! Razor shackled up. This could be almost it. They've got no heroes left up. And GG! VG Gaming will advance through as they 2-0 out Radiant DK and get themselves attack. a date with EG. They take down Cloud9. They take down DK. I think it... If EG is watching, they should be very, very afraid. I would be very, very afraid. But EG are fresh. EG will have a, had time to analyze their opponents today, and they've got to be ready. They will be coming to the main stage next, and of course, the winner of that matchup will go to the grand final. But I still want to give massive props. DK, they managed to fight through the best.